The Phantom, the Phantom 3 4K can uh, shoot high resolution video, full 4K and UHD at 24 frames per second, which is great if you want to achieve that film quality look. But if you do want to achieve the full film quality look, you have to get your shutter speed right. And it ought to be 2x, in other words, around about a 50th of a second to get that film quality look at 24 frames per second. Now, if the lighting conditions are such that the shutter speed of 1 50th is too bright, you're going to get an overblown shot. And you can tweak it, of course, you can set the exposure value, you can mess around with ISO to a degree, and of course, you can do stuff in post production. But the standard way of solving this on, on most lenses is to use a pair of ray bands or an ND filter. And here I've got a variable ND filter designed specifically for the Phantom 3. Uh, so I'll fit this now and show you the process of getting this onto the camera. seem to want to come out of its box. This is the ND filter. I'm not sure I can hold this up to the camera lens. It's set on it's set on its minimum setting. I can see that there. You turn the dial and to uh, corresponding plates, either a line to let the light through or cross to reduce uh, the line, the light coming through the lens. So it's on the minimum setting. Maybe if I turn this, you might be able to see it going to its maximum setting. And it's gone darker, and then it should have gone back to light again. And this needs to go on here. And this ring around the camera lens is in fact uh, I think it's a clear filter, it might be a UV filter, but we have to get that off. So let's pull that thing off and screw on the, the Neuer variable ND filter. You can get filters fixed at certain values like 2 or 8 or 4. A variable ND filter gives you all, all of the available options. This should just screw off. It doesn't want to. I should have taken these props off. Well, as you can see, I'm struggling with this, so I've kind of grabbed myself an elastic band. I'm going to try and use that to get a bit of purchase on this, this uh, UV filter. Hopefully there's a bit even pressure all around the filter. No, it doesn't seem to want to budge. Another try. It's remarkable they put them on so tightly. I can't imagine why. Uh, maybe. I'm hoping you don't uh, they don't come off in transit. <sighs> nope. Ah, ah, right. Okay, maybe I loosened it. It's, it's moving now. Whoa, that was tough to get off. And there we have access to the lens. Let me go and grab the filter.
just to remind you, all it is is uh, uh, sunglasses uh, for uh, a lens. I'll just try and show you one more time how that uh, works. It's on the minimum setting now, and I'll just take it to the maximum setting. Hopefully you can see the filter darkening. And the beauty of uh, a variable filter is that uh, no matter what the light conditions you've got, you've got uh, any setting you want on the filter. Um, so when you're shooting 24 frames per second and you want 1 50th of a second on the shutter to give you that film quality look, and the situation, the light situation is that it's very bright, then the ND filter can take you down a few stops in terms of exposure value and it's variable. So there you have it and it's obviously a bit heavier than the standard filter because I think the standard filter it would stay upright so it's a little bit heavier um, perhaps I should just power it on and make sure that the, the lens stays up Mm, that looks okay. Well, I've just had a look on the uh, inside of the UV filter that was fitted to the camera from the factory and there appears to be some sort of red dot on the threads. I don't know whether that was used uh, to secure the uh, lens uh, to the camera but uh, maybe that was the resistance that you have to overcome. So there you have it, getting <laughs> I thought it would be a very straightforward exercise, putting a ND filter onto the lens of the Phantom 3 Professional. I believe it's the same size on the standard and on the, sorry this is the advanced, uh, same size on the Professional as well as this one the advanced and also the standard. But you may, if yours is as stiff as mine then maybe um, you may need something to try and get some purchase on that. Perhaps some mole grips with some protection around it. Uh, mole grips or vice grips or um, spring clamps or spring pliers, I think they're called in the States. Uh, but you don't want to damage that ring. Uh, so maybe some bit of rubber around it, as I did, might help uh, get it off if it's a, a problem for you also. Anyway, if you found this interesting and useful, um, give us a thumbs up.